The promise kiss at springtime that makes the lonely winter seem long. You are the breathless hush of evening that trembles on the brink of a lovely song. You are the angel glow that lights a star, the dearest things I know. How would you are someday? My happy arms will hold you, and someday I'll know that moment divine when all the things you are, all the things you are, all the things you are are mine, mine, all mine. <laughs> My name is Elegant, the name rhymes with DuPont, and with me sharing this time is the wonderful, stupendous, fantastic Aaron Graves at the piano. And um, we're going to share some tips with you. Um, we're going to run through some things, vocal warm-up exercises, some healthy habits, and what to consider when you're preparing for a concert, um, understanding your voice, and um, just the importance of vocal preservation. So just a little bit about me. I was born and raised in Philly. I sang all my early life in glee clubs and school and church choirs. And I studied music at various uh, music schools here in Philly. Uh, Settlement Music School was the main one. Also, uh, what is now University of the Arts, it had two other names back then. I studied there for a while. And I mostly studied theory and harmony and uh, vocal lessons. And I studied guitar and saxophone for a little while. That's another story. Anyway, uh, after high school, I sang with the oldies group called the Orlans. And um, I sang with a few other R&B groups. And we had a group together for a while, a group called Instruments and Voices. And we were mainly an R&B group. But I would sneak in jazz every so often because that was my passion. And so when that group broke up, I devoted my time to j singing jazz full time. And so I did my first jazz gig in 1985 at Freedom Theater here in Philly. And um, Philly's voice of jazz, Bob BP with the GM Perkins, was the MC for that concert. And so I've been singing predominantly jazz ever since. And so I get to work with wonderful musicians like Aaron Graves and lots of other folks that are stupendous in this area. I also sing with a vocal collective called Sisters Attune. We do a little bit of mostly R&B, but we sneak in jazz every so often and some world music. So that's briefly a little bit of, about me. So again, I'm going to run down just a few things to help you take care of your voice. Um, vocal warm-up exercises with some breathing tips. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on um, um, the technical parts. I'll share with you as, as best I can. Um, and what to consider when you're preparing for a concert <clears throat> and understanding your voice, song choices, keys, things like that, and um, just mainly um, vocal safety. So there was an expression I read in a magazine, and it startled me at first, but um, as I thought about it, it just made sense. And that expression is warm up or die. And it's a little extreme, but if you think about it, if you don't warm up before you prepare to do a concert, you know, you're probably going to have difficulty getting through any any kind of a concert, even if it's a short, short thing, like where you're just doing two or three songs. Um, best to warm up. So um, I was taught to warm up like a saxophone, where you sing whole notes, round notes, and you try to emphasize each note, listen to each note, and... Um, 
make a transition from one note to the next going up the scale. So I'm going to give you a little demonstration of how I warm up. And um, these are the vowels. I hope you can see it. These are the vowels that I use when I warm up. O, A, A, E. And then coming down is A, E, O, A. So hopefully you can see that. I'm going to sit that right here. So Aaron is going to um, help me do this warm up. I'm going to start in the key of F, and we're going to go up the up the major scale, and then we, when we then we're going to go up a half a step and come down a major scale, and that would be one set, and then we'll do the same thing maybe a couple of times, not too many, just because it's kind of boring, <laughs> but it's good for you. It's good to warm up, and um, it'll help you uh, sustain your sound, you know, and also you'll get a get in touch with your voice, you know, just to hear what you sound like, you know, and try to round your notes as best you can and, um, and breathe. I guess I should talk a little bit about breathing. Um, they teach you to breathe through your diaphragm, and that's somewhere between your stomach, somewhere around here. And um, one way you can tell if you're breathing through your diaphragm is to watch a baby a baby when a baby is sleeping. The stomach rises when the baby, baby breathes in and and falls when the baby breathes out. So that's kind of what, it, and you can also put your, your hand on your stomach just to you know, see how that you know, feels. So I'm gonna try it now. <clears throat> So that's basically how I warm up. And I go until I, I go as far as I want to go. Like I try to warm up my higher range as well. And just a mention about higher range and lower range. Um, just for a point of information, um, your chest voice is the range of notes at the bottom of your voice. And the head voice is the range of notes at the top of your voice. And the challenge is to match or make the transition smooth between your chest voice and your head voice. Um, I'm still working on that, so, you know, that's just a challenge. Now, I demonstrated to you the vocal warm-up. So here is your opportunity to try it out using these syllables, O, A, A, E, A, E, O, A. And here is your turn to do it. We're going to start on the key of F, and Aaron's going to play for you. Okay. And now we're going up a half 
another step and coming down. So that's one scale. Some healthy habits, basic tips on taking care of your voice. Stay hydrated. Drink plenty of water. Um, and that's all during the day before you sing, during the time that you sing, after you sing. And another good tip is chamomile tea. Um, I'm, actually, I'm actually drinking that. Um, chamomile tea is a natural cough suppressant. And um, trust me, I've had some bouts with coughing in the middle of a song, and the band had to keep playing, and I just have to stop and, you know, let it go run its course. But chamomile tea will keep, keep that, you know, under a minimum. It'll help soothe your voice and coat, coat your throat. So chamomile tea. Here's to you. So I should talk a little bit about diet. It's good to watch your diet. And that doesn't mean watch yourself shovel it in. <laughs> that basically means to be careful, you know, try not to eat a whole lot before you sing. You, you don't want to be full and miserable to try to get through a, a set or a few songs. And I've been there, I've done that, and it's not a pretty sight. Not to mention the belching and, you know, it's just not pretty. You have to balance um, eating with you know, sustaining your energy because you do need energy and the food, food is going to give you fuel to get you through that performance if it's short or long. And I find, for me, I get hungry in between sets. If I'm doing more than one set, I get crazy hungry after. Maybe it's just the adrenaline or whatever it is. But So what I do is I order something and I try to eat something light, you know, eat part of it and save it and take it home with me. And watch salad dressing. I had the terrible uh, experience of having a salad and getting choked on salad dressing. And it, uh, the next set, it was, it was awful. So be careful what you eat. Um, so some people say, and I'm one of them, watch dairy. I try to leave dairy alone as much as possible because it can coat your throat. It can cause mucus to build up, and that's really hard to sing with mucus build up. So, um, you know, how you, how you eat is up to you, but um, try to eat safely and try not to eat too much, especially before a performance. Uh, so, let me see. Oh, rest. It is essential to get plenty of rest. Um, that doesn't mean, um, you know, you, you need like eight hours. Some people don't sleep eight hours. Eight hours, of course, is that's what they say is essential or is the best. Try to rest a little bit before you have to sing. Not rest too much because then it's hard to warm your voice up. But, pardon me, um, just try to get some rest, enough rest so that you can get through a night's performance, whether it's one set or two sets or maybe even three sets. Um, just try to get enough rest so that you can function. You know, you're alert and you can focus on what you have to do. So getting rest is essential. What to consider when preparing to do a performance? Choose songs that you know well. If it's a song that you really want to do and you don't know it well, try to learn it. Put some time in learning the song. Write out the lyrics. Try to think about what the song is saying to you. Um, try to tell the story. The story is essential. And um, the better you know a song, the better the story is going to be and the better your performance is going to be. So put some time in on learning the song. Write the lyrics out. Read the lyrics before you sing them, you know, just to get used to the song, the, the phrase, you know, where the words connect and you know, the meaning of the words, just to try to emphasize it as much as possible. That's going to really be helpful. And um, learn the story of the song. Think about the song format, how you want to sing the song. Do you want to sing it straight down? Do you want to sing it with a solo, uh, a piano solo, a bass solo, drum solo? Um, where do you want to come back in? Do you want to come back in at the bridge? Do you want to come back in at the top of the song and go right down again? How do you want to do, how do you want to interpret the song? Um, song interpretation is very important. It can also 
uh, you can you can interpret a song in such a way that it becomes a signature for you as a vocalist, and people know you by that song. Oh yeah, she did that song. I love that song. And I'll give you a perfect example. Um, years ago, I saw Doris Day in this old movie, Doris Day and James Cagney. And she did this song. The song is called Love Me or Leave Me. And she did it, of course, as a ballad. So I'm just going to demonstrate a little bit. Love me or leave me and let me be lonely. You won't believe me, but I love you only. I'd rather be lonely than happy with somebody else. Now that's beautiful. And it was a beautiful song. She did, of course, you got full orchestration and all that, you know. And then along comes Miss Nina Simone. Nina Simone liked this song, and she turned it upside down. So this is how she does it. Love me or leave me, let me be lonely. You won't believe me, but I love you only. I'd rather be lonely than happy with somebody else. You might find the night time, the right time for kissing. My time is my time for just reminiscing, regretting instead of forgetting with somebody else. There'll be no one unless that someone is you. I intend to be independently blue. Well, I want your love, don't want to borrow. Have it today, give back tomorrow. My love is your love. My love is your love. I ain't got no love for nobody else. Nobody else. <laughs> so, Needless to say, that's my favorite song by Nina Simone, and it's just my favorite version of that song. But this is just to indicate to you how distinctive these two versions are and how if you turn it and you find a way that you want to do the song, any song, you can interpret it and it can become your signature song, just like that one belongs to Nina Simone. I think of her version before I think of Doris Day's version, and I like both. But, I mean, Nina Simone, you know, what can you say? <laughs> So um, understanding your voice, it's important that you choose songs, not only that are uh, uh, comfortable for you, that you can get into and interpret your way, but also um, songs that are comfortable for you to sing, which means keys. You have to find a key that's comfortable for you. Do not let anyone dictate to you what key you should sing that song in. Sing it in the key that's most comfortable for your range. And the key is what you would let the pianist know or the bassist know, the whole band know, okay, I'm going to sing this song in this key. And that way everybody is on the same page. So um, find what your range is. You can um, work with someone awesome like Aaron Graves or someone else awesome. There are a lot of awesome musicians and guitarists that can work with you and help you determine your range um, for your key in a particular song and um, make sure you, the range of this, the entire range of the song is comfortable for you, the lower part of the song and the higher part of the song. Make sure you can sing it in that's a range that's comfortable and let the pianist, if you're not familiar with keys, let the pianist or guitarist um, tell you what key that song is and keep track of your keys so you can know the next time you want to do that song, oh, I sing this song in A flat, something like that. So, um, um, if the key, the original key is not comfortable, and some songs you might find the original key is great. You can do it from, you know, the lowest part of the song to the highest part of the song. You can do it in that key. Um, but try to um, find the key that works for you. I need to emphasize the importance of vocal preservation and vocal safety. Be careful when you sing. Try not to overdo it. Try to be as comfortable as you can in your voice. And learn as much as you can about your voice. Learn your strengths and your weaknesses and try to work on all of it. Um, what is strong for you? What is weak for you? You know, sometimes your weaknesses may turn into a strength, all depending on how you work 
and how, how you take care of yourself and how you sing. Now, vocal cool down. You can probably cool down the same way we warmed up, you know, just uh, doing the scale, maybe going down. You want to try that? I just warmed up, or I cooled down, sort of like I warmed up. It's the same, same kind of a principle, basically taking your time and singing until your voice feels relaxed. And um, the best way to cool down is to stop singing. Relax, rest, stop talking. As talking, especially, talking can be a big strain on your voice. And I know that's hard when you're at a gig and people want to say, girl, you sounded great. And they want to, yeah, where are you, where are you going to work at? And you know, they want to talk to you about what you're about, what you're doing. And it's kind of hard. You've done the whole show and you're tired. But sometimes it's hard not to engage the audience and not to engage, you know, your friends and your fans. Your fans. Um, but try to rest as much as you can. You know, get to a point when you get out to the car and where you just stop talking you know, relax and rest. That's very, very important. Every singer, every singer has something to say and something to share. Find what you love to sing and share it with the world. And that's it. <laughs> the first song I sang was All the Things You Are. And the next song I did was Love Me or Leave Me. So we're going to close with this one. This is a song, my favorite Cole Porter song. Of course, the great Ella Fitzgerald made this famous, and this is called I love you, humsy April breeze. I love you, echoes the hills. I love you, the golden dawn agrees as once more it sees daffodils. It's spring again and birds on the wing again start to sing again the old melody I love you that's the song of songs and it all belongs to you and me I, I, I love you Home's the April breeze I love you Echoes the hills, I love you. The golden dawn agrees as once more it sees that foothills. It's spring again, birds on the wing again. Start to singing again the old melody. I love you. That's the song of songs, and it all belongs. It all belongs, it all belongs to you, it all belongs to you, it all belongs, it all belongs, it all belongs to you and me. I love you, I love you, sing your song all day long. I love you, so deep, 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 deep. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. I 
love you